at verse 26. God has made all things thus far. He's done it in six days, and now He has got His last creation here, and He's creating man. Look at verse 26. And God said, let us... We looked last week at how that speaks of the Trinity. Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb-bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. And to every beast of the earth and to every fowl of the air and to everything that creepeth upon the earth wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat. And it was so, and God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Let's pray quickly, and we'll dive into our study. Father, we love you. Thank you for your mercy and your grace. Thank you, Lord, for letting us be in church. God, I pray now that you help me as I try to teach some things out of your book. We thank you for the book of Genesis, the book of beginnings. I have enjoyed this study thus far, and so I pray you help me now as I try to convey some truths. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so we looked last week, like I said, at verse 26 about where God created man, and uh, we're looking here now at the dominion that man has over the earth. Now, we understand from verse 27 that we're created in the image of God. God put man here as a king. Adam was a king in the garden. Look over there at Psalms chapter number 8. Psalms chapter 8. Now, who was the original king on the earth? Lucifer. Lucifer was. We saw that in Ezekiel 28. But look there at Psalms chapter number 8. Psalms chapter number 8. Now you have to really pay attention on purpose. We've all eaten and it's hot in here and all that kind of stuff. So you have to pay attention on purpose. I'm not going to be long. We've got to get on the road anyway and go to Michigan and all that kind of stuff. But we do want to take time to just pay attention on purpose. Try extra hard. Pinch yourself if you need to to stay awake. I'm almost about to fall asleep and I'm the one preaching. Amen. Look at Psalms chapter number 8 and verse number 6. Or excuse me, verse number 5. Look at Psalms chapter 8 and verse number 5. For thou hast made him, talking about man, a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yea, the beasts of the field, the fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passeth through the paths of the sea. O Lord our God, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. So man was put here to have dominion. We were a king over the earth. When Adam was put there in the garden, he crowned man with glory and honor. You put a crown on a king, right? And so man is the pinnacle of God's creation. We understand that Lucifer and his, and his followers that followed him, they fail, they sinned, he was cast out of heaven, he was king of the earth, he tried to get his throne to ascend above God's throne. And so we understand, we already studied all this, but just to recap, God sent a universal flood, literally flooded out the entire universe with a flood, destroyed Satan's kingdom, destroyed the earth, and then began to create a new one out of the material that he had initially, all right? And so now we find that here's the Garden of Eden. Here's this beautiful garden that he planted. He's got the earth. Everything is good. And now he's created man. He has formed man in his own image. Now, chapter 2, we'll get into some more of the details about the dust and the breath of life and all that kind of stuff. But we find here that God told man, he said, have dominion over the earth. Have dominion over You are the king of the earth. Have dominion over I've crowned you with glory and honor. You say, preacher, you said something about man not being able to go into space and all that. What, what in the world were you talking about? You, may, you were talking crazy. Well, let's look at it. You ready? He said, have dominion over the fish of the sea. Have dominion over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing. So notice our dominion is over the animal life, right? 
Listen, that's why you should never feel bad about the fact that they hook a mule onto a plow and make that mule plow, okay? Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with riding horseback and all that kind of stuff. Nothing wrong with putting animals to labor. That's what they're there for, all right? We'll, when we read it in Genesis 9, we'll also learn that now that they're there for meat. But understand, uh, all these animal rights activists and all that, well, animals were the, animals were the initial people, the initial creatures on the earth, and we're just, we're just inhabiting their space. It's really theirs. The earth is really theirs, and mankind is just encroaching on it. That's a bunch of environmental animal rights hogwash, all right? Listen, uh, they, I, I was uh, listening to a, a guy talk, and he was talking about how uh, several years back they were going to put a highway up through California, but then they found out that a portion of the highway that they were going to put in, it was going to cut down on hours and hours of people sitting in traffic, but a portion of the highway, a part of that land where they were going to put it, is the home to an endangered spotted owl. And they can't build that highway now because of the endangered spotted owl. Guys, they say it's a mating ground. They have to have, you know, something like 2,000 acres uh, for these spotted owls to mate. Guys, you know what that is? That is, abs- that is the creature, or that is, uh, that is man serving the creature more than the creator. That is putting so much emphasis on creation and on the animal life. Listen, we're supposed to be good stewards of the earth, and we're supposed to take care of it. But listen, at the end of the day, I don't care if polar bears go extinct. Amen? Amen? Well, don't you want fluffy polar bears? Them polar bears would kill you in a heartbeat if you used to walk up on them. All right? Well, I mean, listen, we went to the, went to the zoo and all that kind of stuff, or the, the aquarium over in Gatlinburg, and the penguins were cute. They were cute to look at, but at the end of the day, if I never get to see a penguin again, it's not going to affect my life, all right? Now, I'm trying to be a little bit funny, but listen to me. What you've got to realize is, is we are kings of the earth. We are here to have dominion over the earth. And all this animal rights stuff, you know what it is? It is feeding right into the plan of the Antichrist because there's going to be a time during the tribulation period when bestiality is going to come back. Bestiality is going to make a comeback. They were. We don't have time to get into all of it, but over there in the book of Joshua, you ever wondered why in the book of Joshua there were some places where God said, go in there, uh, kill all the men, but you can keep the cattle and keep the sheep and keep the horses and all that kind of stuff. But then there were other times where God went in and said, when you go in there, I want you to kill everything. Don't even let the cattle live. You ever wondered why that is? Because in those pagan religions and those devilish ceremonies and those supernatural things that they did in, in ancient times, there was bestiality going on in those cattle and those horses they were messed with. And that's all I'll say. There's a reason. Like I said this morning, there's a reason why God destroyed all the animals on the earth except for the ones God told Noah to take on the ark. Why? Because it said all flesh had corrupted its way upon the earth. Satan wants to corrupt anything that's good. That includes the animal life. So here you got all these animals and all these, you know, eth- you know the, what is it, PETA, the people, people for the ethical treatment of animals. No, listen, I think you ought to treat your animals right. I don't think you ought to beat on your animals and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But, I mean, under God, they'll, they'll say, man, a, a, a dog, uh, I remember one time there was this crazy lady that lived below our house when I lived at home, and she was calling the animal patrol because our dogs didn't have a dog house outside. They slept on the porch, on dog beds. And my daddy said, if we were to get dog houses, they wouldn't sleep in the dog houses. She said, well, I'm sorry, you got to have it. So you know what they did? They went out and bought dog houses, and guess where the dogs did not sleep? In the dog houses. They slept under the porch, on their beds, like they did every single night. But, you know, all, this stuff, all these animal codes and all this kind of stuff. You know what that is? You know what PETA actually stands for? People eating tasty animals. That's what it actually stands Amen. for. Amen? We're here to have dominion over the earth. But now here's where it gets crazy. Yeah, so some of y'all are like, Brother Sluter, please just move on to your next point. I, listen, I've, I've been in these foreign countries. Go, listen, you know you never see any stray dogs in the Philippines? You know why? They eat them. Cats too. Yeah, cow. Yeah, cats especially. There are no stray. You may see a stray dog every once in a while, but you for sure ain't seeing no stray cats. <laughs> Missionary told me they found a python dead in the road one time, and he took it home and cooked it for su- or cooked it for breakfast. That's a true story. 
said he served it to all his workers, didn't tell them what it was. Amen. <laughs> You say, you didn't. listen, uh, over there in some Eastern European countries, they cook horse. I don't know if I'd eat a horse. I guess if I was hungry enough, I'd eat a horse. Amen. I'm, what I'm trying to get at, though, listen to me, what I'm trying to get at is, is the fact that man is here. We're supposed to have dominion over there. You better be careful with that animal rights activist stuff. The Bible says they worshiped and served the creature more than the what? Creator, which is blessed forever. That's Romans chapter 1, verse 23. You better be careful with that stuff. Now, You say, what does all this have to do with space travel? All right, here's where it gets weird. You ready? Nothing we can do about it. The Bible's a weird book. The Bible's especially weird to people that don't read it, right? Our dominion goes as high as what? The eagle. As far as I can tell, the eagle's the highest flying animal. And we're supposed to have dominion over the what? The sea, the fishes, the aquatic life. The cattle, the creeping things, and the birds of the air. After that eagle, as far as that eagle can fly, that's as far as our dominion goes. You say, why? Because God has given us the earth. Notice what Psalms chapter 115 says. Look at Psalms 115 verse 16. Psalms 115 16. This verse will blow your mind. You say, Brother Suter, are you really preaching against people going to space? Well, well, let's just see what God has to say about it. Psalms chapter 115 Verse 16, Psalms 115, 16. Psalms chapter 115, look there at verse number 16. All right, if you're there, say amen. Amen. All right, Psalms 115, 16. I don't know, now listen, we're Bible believers, right? I don't know how plainer this could get. All right, NASA and SpaceX and all these guys, and they're trying to get to, you know, sending men into space, and, you know, space is the final frontier and all this kind of stuff. All right, well, let's look at what God has to say about it. The heaven, even the heavens, are the what? Lords. But the earth hath he given to who? Children of men. When man goes into space, he's trespassing on territory he has no business going. You say, why is that? Well, remember all the way back in our, like I think our second study on Genesis, where is Satan right now? He's in space. He's the prince of the power of the air. He's swimming around in the deeps, right? He's in the firmament above. So guess what mankind is not supposed to do? He's not supposed to venture out of the safety of the earth. Guys, you say, well, that's crazy. You're you're telling me that NASA and SpaceX and all this crazy stuff, you mean to tell me that they're in some kind of conspiracy to try to get up there and build and colonize other... That's literally what they said they're doing, man. What's his name? Guy over... uh, Elon Musk, right? Elon Musk says that his goal is to one day colonize Mars. They're talking about colonizing the moon. They're t- I mean, some conspiracies out there even say they've already done some of that on the moon and, and Mars and all this stuff. Understand, that's literally what they say they're going to do. And what does the Bible say? Remember over there in Deuteronomy where it talks about uh, Deuteronomy chapter 30 where God said, if there's any Jews that have been scattered where? To the outermost parts of heaven, I will gather them from there. Isn't that what it said? So understand the Bible talks about potentially the fact that there will be people and they were on other planets and things of that nature. They are headed that way. And in case you think that this is something new, well, that's crazy, Brother Slater. Hold on, hold on. We'll get to it in Genesis 11, but let's just refresh our memory real quick. Were they not trying to do the same thing in Genesis chapter number 11 with the Tower of Babel? They were trying to build a tower that reached where? Unto heaven. And God said that because they were all of one mind and one language and had one accord to do it, that if He did not stop them, they would have accomplished it. Right? Right. And so He goes down there and confuses their language, stops the building. They were trying to get up to heaven. And man has been trying to get up to heaven and been trying to build a tower and build rocket ships and all this kind of stuff and get in space. Well, yeah, but you know, some of these astronauts were Christian men and, all, and I'm not doubting that. Some of these astronauts go up there and you know, they've quoted scripture and you know, we went to the Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum over in Gatlinburg and they've got, you know, where Bibles have gone to space and all this. And, and that's interesting and fine and great and all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, man doesn't belong up there. You know why? Because there's things going on up there that God's trying to protect us from and shield us from. There's things up there that man has no business seeing or knowing about. 
Because we're delving in, we're in, as the book of Colossians says, intruding into those things which cannot be seen. We're in, listen, you know what mankind is doing? Mankind is trying, you know, all these contacts with aliens and all this kind of stuff. So we understand that there are no such thing as aliens, little green men from other planets. We understand that those are what? Fallen demonic beings. And guess where they are? They're up there. The Bible says that there's spiritual wickedness where? In high places. Man, you could, listen, you couldn't pay me enough to go up there anyway. Are you kidding me? Be, fly up into space and be on the, on the, what is it called, the International Space Station, all that kind of stuff. Have you ever seen the food those guys got to eat? <laughs> Under God. Yeah, I couldn't do it, man. I couldn't do it being up there in clothes and cramped in and floating around all the time. I couldn't do it. I, I mean, I can barely survive down here, let alone up in space. Understand, though, that when God gave us dominion over the earth, He meant the earth. That's why a lot of times they go up into space and they got to make, you know, man's body in space doesn't work. It it, it, you get muscle atrophy. They've got to constantly be working out because the zero gravity and all that kind of stuff deteriorates the muscles and it messes with the mind. And I mean, it just all it does all sorts of crazy stuff, now, let alone all the stuff about going to Mars. And I mean, understand though, that's all part of the plan. I, 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 the more and more I study my Bible, listen, I, I say this with all seriousness, the more and more I study my Bible, the more I realize that so much of our culture is I mean, gravitating at lightning speed towards pushing us towards the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. More so now than you could ever imagine. I mean, who would have thought space travel could be pushing us towards the plan of the Antichrist? That's exactly where it's headed, though. That's exactly where it's headed. We're fascinated with things out there. We're fascinated with things in outer space. In fact, we have a story about this, right? Remember when Paul and, uh, and Silas... Is it Paul and Silas? Paul, I think it's Paul and Silas over there in the book of Acts. They show up and they, the men of Athens thought that they were from outer space. They said, you, you, you came down, you're Jupiter and Mercury... And Mercury, you guys came down just like this idol came down from Jupiter. Remember they said that there was an idol that came from Jupiter. Yeah. I don't think they were lying. I think there was probably something that came from outer space, from Jupiter. In fact, one of the one of the places that they're talking about inhabiting, one of the one of the things that you know, if we ever needed a second Earth or we're gonna go they said one of the moons of Jupiter is designed just very similar to Earth. There's several moons around Jupiter that could possibly... You know, Jupiter's the biggest planet. They said possibly it could be inhabitable by humans. Or could be, you know, if they were colonizing. You say, preacher, you sound crazy. That's fine. A lot of preachers sound crazy until stuff starts happening. Amen? Man has no business going into space. His dominion only goes as high as the bird flies. Look, look verse 29 through 31 and we'll get out of here. You ready? All right, so we got off all the weird stuff. Here we go, verse number 29. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb-bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat, uh, the fruit and the vegetables and all that kind of stuff. God gave us the herbs and everything like that uh, to, to eat of. And uh, nobody's going to deny the fact that a plant-based diet is a better diet. We're not denying eating meat. Eating meat is a necessity now for, and we'll get into that in Genesis chapter number nine. But uh, we understand that a plant based diet, God made the plants, God made this stuff for us to eat. He didn't make little Debbies and somebody say me right there. I like it though, man, I like it. He didn't make Doritos, say me right there, Jacob. But he gave somebody the brains to make it, you know. But understand, a plant-based diet is better for you. In the Garden of Eden, they were vegetarian. In the, book of, in the book of Genesis, they all ate nothing. And even the animals, they were vegetarian. All the animals were vegetarians in the Garden of Eden. Everything was given. Notice, not only were you supposed to eat the fruit, you're also supposed to eat the seed. Eating the seeds are good for you. I, they came out, you know that the, uh, the apple seeds and apricot seeds contain certain vitamins that are known in high concentration to fight cancer. It's called B12, I think it is. And you know what they came out with now? They said, oh, no, don't eat the seeds of these fruits. There's cyanide in them. 
You'll get cyanide poisoning. You say, what does that mean for you? That just means be careful. Listen, God gave you that fruit and that stuff to eat. He gave you, eat the seeds and stuff. I like eating seeds. Seeds are good for you. That's right here in the book of Genesis, right? How to eat, how to take care of yourself physically. I've been trying to lose weight, man. It's hard. I've been trying to do that keto thing. You know what I realize? If I just sit around and eat deli meat and cheese and pork rinds all the time, I'm not going to feel good even if I'm on keto. <laughs> Me and Jake, man, my wife would say, what kind of snacks do y'all need on the way up? I'd say, get us pepperoni and pork rinds. She said, you want anything else? No, beef jerky if you got it, you know, that kind of thing. Eat some vegetables and fruits. Now notice here, and God, verse 31, we'll skip down to verse 31. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was what? Very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. And we'll come back next week. We'll pick it up in chapter number two and verse number one. And we'll now chapter two is a wild chapter, man. A wild chapter. We're gonna get into some good stuff with chapter number two about God creating us out of dust and what that means and all this kind of stuff. And how mankind has always known he's made from dust. How many y'all how, how many y'all ever heard of this? I'll give you a little taste of what's coming next week. Y'all ever heard of this stuff where uh, it's called grounding? Where if you take your shoes off and go walk around outside, it's supposed to alleviate your shoes. How many of you, I love walking around barefoot outside. How many of you ever just, man, you just go outside and you just get in the grass and the dirt and just walking around out there, just, it just relaxes you. It just, there's something about it. Well, a lot of these new agers call it grounding. You know, you're feeding off the magnetic energy from the earth. And there may be some truth in all that, but I'll give you a much more simple biblical explanation. Why You ever wonder why kids just like playing around in the dirt so much? I'll give you a real simple Bible explanation. That's what they're made of. That's what we're made of. That's why it feels so, that's why it feels so good just to get outside in the dirt and kind of get your toes down in the grass and the mud. Or if you're at the beach. You know why? Because that's just what you're made of. You're made of that stuff. And so you like being around it. See that there? King James Bible is more up to date than tomorrow's newspaper. All right, let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for your mercy and your grace. Thank you, Lord, for letting us be in church. God, I pray you bless our time here together. I pray you bring us back safely. In Jesus' name, amen.